Rick is the Alfred Lerner Professor of Banking and Financial Institutions at Columbia Business School. From September 2006 to August 2008, he served on the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System and was, a very, visible, was very visible in that role. He's also been a senior fellow at the FDIC Center for Banking Research. From 1994 to 1997, he was Executive Vice President and Director of Research at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York and an Associate Economist of the Federal Open Market Committee of the Federal Reserve System. He's widely credited for building the strong research group at the New York Fed, which has played a crucial role in the government's efforts to stabilize the financial system. Since receiving his PhD from MIT in 1976, he's taught at the University of Chicago, Northwestern University, Princeton University, as well as Columbia. He also received an honorary professorship from the People's University of China. Please join me in welcoming Rick Mishman. Come on, Rick, come, come on up. Sorry, I just had to make one other announcement before I literally turn things over to Rick. Rick is going to speak for about half an hour. We will then have uh, 15 minutes of Q&A from the general audience, and we will reserve the last 15 minutes specifically for questions from the press. Well, it's uh, absolutely wonderful to be back at Columbia. Uh, it's good to be a professor. And actually, uh, it's really good to be a professor now because it doesn't get any more intellectually interesting than it is at the current juncture. Uh, so as a scholar, it doesn't get any better than this. I have to tell you, as a policymaker, or actually in terms of what happened to my TIA CREF, uh, it's not so good. But that's the way life is. And uh, uh, we're happy to, have, uh, have get, to look at the good aspects of things. So I want to be controversial today. One of the nice things about not being uh, at the Federal Reserve is I can talk much more bluntly than I could uh, when I was there. In fact, I was considered probably, in fact, one of my speeches, uh, Larry Meyer was a former governor, came up to me. It was one of my early speeches. And he said, Rick, this is remarkable. It was so clear. So uh, uh, usually there's a lot more obfuscation uh, because you have to be so careful. Well, I'm not going to be careful today. Uh, I want to talk about this issue, which I think is absolutely critical. It's not the title of the talk that was uh, put in the uh, program a while ago. It is very related to it. Uh, but it's absolutely a critical issue today. Uh, and it's this question about how effective is monetary policy during a financial crisis. And in particular, there's a common view out there that uh, monetary policy has not been very effective during this financial crisis. And of course, the reason why people, and they, they, they use a phrase which is one that was very much talked about during the Great Depression. Uh, when I first started uh, learning economics, uh, my first course was in 1969, giving you an, how, an idea of how old I am, uh, that uh, uh, we looked at the Samuelson textbook and they always talked about the Depression. Money didn't matter then because they were pushing on a string. And in fact, that same language is being used a lot. And the reason why people have made this kind of, had this kind of view is because you look at what's happened. And what's happened is that the Federal Reserve has had aggressive easing. It's lowered the uh, federal funds rate from five and a quarter percent down to one. And uh, the markets are expecting another, another substantial cut at the next FOMC meeting. So very s substantial movement down of, uh, of interest rates for, by the Federal Reserve. And yet when you look at the cost of borrowing for both households and businesses, that's gone up. And of course, the availability of credit has also been, uh, been uh, limited because uh, 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 lending standards have been tightening appreciably. So the view is monetary policy is just not working. And here's two quotes. Uh, one I consider to be much more problematic than the other. Uh, uh, one is from Paul Krugman. That's not the problematic one. Uh, but as you see, he said, we are already, however, well into the realm of what I call depression economics. By that, I mean a state of affairs like that of the 1930s, in which the usual tools of monetary policy, above all, the Federal Reserve's ability to pump up the economy by cutting interest rates, have lost all traction. Monetary policy is ineffective. The one that's more troubling to me is one that was in actually the FOMC minutes of the last FOMC meeting because it said, some members were concerned that the effectiveness of cuts in the target federal funds rate may have been diminished by the financial dislocations, suggesting that further policy action might have limited efficacy in promoting recovery in economic growth. So what I'm going to tell you is that these views are just plain wrong, and they're highly dangerous. So that's why I can be much blunter. I couldn't say those kind of things when I made speeches as a Federal Reserve Governor. Uh, but, but I can now, and it's good to be a professor. 
Uh, and I, you know, and actually it's good because you usually don't have to wear a suit, but you know, I put one on today just for you guys. Uh, but why is this view so dangerous? Well, there are two, two uh, conclusions that come out of this view, which is one is, if it's not going to work, then why bother with monetary policy? It's not a tool that needs to be used in terms of dealing with financial crises. And the second is that using monetary policy to deal with the crisis actually has a cost. And the cost is that it can actually weaken the credibility of the central bank in terms of controlling inflation. And that can actually be a very serious negative consequence because as all of us who are monetary economists who have studied uh, 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 monetary economics for the last 30 years, the key thing that we've learned is that having a strong nominal anchor is central to a, a central bank being successful both on controlling inflation but also on being able to act, actively be able to deal with uh, negative shocks to aggregate demand. 